All right, I'd like to welcome everybody um, to our very first meeting um, post coming out of beta. Um, in some ways, some things still feel beta, but I, and I understand that, but I wanna talk a little bit initially about um, what it means that we are, uh, that we're coming out of beta for the grid and for all of us as members. Um, and then I'd like to go into a little bit about uh, some of the mechanics, the invoicing that was done and how that's gonna work going forward. There's a few uh, places I'm gonna have to fix up some things um, where they got delivered to the wrong emails and things like that. All that will be addressed. The good news is that that's, uh, the, they'll go out, invoices will go out monthly going forward. So you'll have something to pay against um, that directly gets into our PayPal. So hopefully it should make it easier to deal with. Um, the one change that, that comes with that is we won't be able to accept Globitz payments. Um, that was a kind of an easy thing to do before, but in order to keep all my bookkeeping straight and in one place, I'm, I'm, we're gonna try and standardize on PayPal as the main mechanism. And if that represents a hardship for anybody, let me know. And uh, I, I don't know if I can offer an alternative, uh, but we'll see what we can work out. Um, so um, beta and coming out of beta and what does it mean? Um, I guess the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, um, OpenSIM itself considers uh, that it's still beta software. It actually doesn't describe itself as beta. It's um, I don't know that they've ever really said they've come out of alpha. Um, OpenSIM as a platform is still, um, so I'll, I'll come back and address questions at the end of my, uh, uh, this first section. Sam, I did see your uh, question. Oh, anyway, um, OpenSIM itself has described itself as alpha and the way the development process works is pretty uh, chaotic at times. Um, changes tend to get pushed into the tree and um, sometimes they're fully baked, sometimes they're not. And uh, the local grid, people that run the local grids have a tendency to have to sort out some of those kinds of issues. Um, there's a lot of different ways to deal with that. Some grids have chosen to stay on an older version of OpenSIM. A, lot of, a number of them are on 08, Kitely comes to mind, uh, a number of others. Um, I'm tracking on USG basically 09, which is the current uh, development stream. And that comes with, what comes with that is a little bit of instability, as I said, the way the development process works. Um, and I'm becoming more and more selective about what I take, to be perfectly honest, from upstream, but there are still changes that are going into 09 that I wanna pick up. And I'll talk about some of those in a few minutes. Um, the reason I don't view 08 as a viable candidate for me going forward is that my primary goal for the grid, um, and I guess this is my version of a roadmap, if you will, what I'd like us to get to and the reason why we're coming out of beta and what it means is that I want to get to a point where we are at parity with quality and stability with Second Life. Uh, because I think that a lot of the customers that we're going to have here are also Second Life customers, and you're used to a level of performance and ability uh, that the Second Life grid provides. That means that um, our prices in a few cases might be a little higher, not to, actually not that much, and I've checked pretty carefully against what's out in the market. You can get definitely spend less money on a grid, and in fact, there's a large number of hobbyist what I describe as hobbyist open SIM grids that um, will often host a region for you for a very low amount of money. I have no problem with that market, and it's um, and if really low prices is the thing that matters, then those would probably be more attractive alternatives. Um, my goal, like I said, is to have something at feature parity and with quality to Second Life, because I want to try and do some things like encourage content creators from Second Life to come over and to set up stores and offer their goods to the metaverse and to open the OpenSIM community. We had a very recent, um, in my opinion, big success in that regard. 
um, with the Bramlin coming over to offer his uh, animations and for Branimations. And for the most part, that was very well received. And I'd like to see more of that kind of thing happening. Um, that also is the reason why we remain a hyper good accessible grid. Um, I can tell you there were many, many nights of discussions uh, where I wrestled with whether I should start a Halcyon-based grid and uh, keep it closed. The truth is that um, the, the other main reason we started this grid was su to support Golden Touch shows. And I don't know that it's feasible for, personally, for a, a grid that's closed to develop the kind of following that would be necessary to have all the content and everything that, that we would want uh, to do Golden Touch shows, but more importantly for all of the residents to get the things that they wanted to get. Um, there are ways around that, but that's a lot of work too. And so, and I ultimately kind of believe that the hypergrid can be done better and be made secure. So um, our goal is to be on the hypergrid, um, offer a quality experience and try and encourage content creators that are used to selling in Second Life to come here because they find uh, a feature set that's at parity with what they're used to in Second Life. So that means that um, I'm interested in tracking features like Bake on Mesh and things like that. And those are things I'm not gonna get if I'm running 0.8. So um, that's the reason for the choice. Um, what coming out of beta means is that I'm in it for the long haul, that we're committing to doing this and that I'm committing my time and, de and development ability to, to meet those goals as best as I possibly can. Now, I, a number of you have had frustrating experiences on the grid in the last week or so um, with teleports occasionally failing, um, with prims going missing, things like that. Some of those issues were addressed uh, hopefully last night with prims going missing. Um, there are still open issues. Um, I, I pretty much know what the problem is. Uh, a lot of it is UDP problems with the UDP stack that is built into OpenSim09. Um, I had a long chat with uh, David Dashler, for those of you from Inworlds that know him, Tranquility, and we talked about some of the design choices that he had made with regard to uh, UDP and in Inworlds uh, because I had a pretty good idea of what was wrong and I really wanted to sanity check it. And he's pretty much confirmed that I'm on the right track, um, which is good to know. I mean, it's it's good as a professional to be able to bounce ideas off of other people and to get their feedback. So um, I'm gonna be porting the UDP stack from Halcyon into OpenSim. And uh, that should allow us to leverage a lot of the hard work that David had put into um, the stack previously. Uh, and get the advantage of it within the OpenSim proper. So, and there's other things that I've, I've talked about this before that I view Halcyon primarily a value in terms of code. I plan on porting a number of changes. A lot of my mesh work that I had done when I was at uh, doing development for Inworlds will get ported over. Um, and uh, we're gonna just continue to take the things from the Halcyon platform that'll add to the experience and to the overall quality of OpenSim uh, to make this the best grid you can find. Um, the, uh, the other thing that comes with that and with regard to uh, coming out of beta is to me, it's about cultivating relationships with other people that are providing parts of the solution. So, and that for me is Firestorm. And recently through a number of people who made introductions, I've gotten to work a little bit with Beck, who's on the Firestorm team. She's a, a great, uh, it's been great to work with. Uh, we've kicked a couple of ideas around on some things. Um, I think that we'll see some changes getting into Firestorm uh, that will make OpenSim better. And, um, and I think she's open and willing to work with the community to and continue to make sure that Open Sim, uh, Firestorm for Open Sim, Sim works well. Um, she's not the only person on the team, and not everybody on the team shares that uh, sentiment. So it's important to me to maintain a good working relationship with her and with the team as a whole. 
but that to me is part of what a business does. When you have partners that you work with, you invest in those partnerships and you make them work. So that's another thing I'm committing to doing uh, as we come out of beta. So um, the, the takeaway for the beta message and what we're talking about is um, we're, we're not a hobbyist grid. We're, my goal is to come up with a serious, stable product and um, and to be as feature complete as I possibly can so that people that could, can go either to SL or to here and have the same kind of quality of experience. So that's really what coming out of beta means. And uh, I know that there are some bumps in the road. I know there are some right now. Uh, I also know that some things have happened over the last year that make it very difficult for a grid owner to come to a group of people and say, trust me. Um, I'm not going to say, trust me, I'm going to try and do the best I can. Uh, but I would ask for your patience and I will, I'll ask that you, um, work with us in the sense of putting in bug reports and, and identifying problems when you see them. And I'll do my best to work with you as will Callie to work with you to address those issues and continue to improve what we're doing here. So. That's kind of a long-winded way of saying that's what coming out of beta means to me. For pretty much everybody here that has a region, you're going to continue to pay the prices you were paying, and nothing's changed in that regard. The uh, At this point, all of the uh, pr regions should have gotten prim increases. You should have 25,000 prims on your region. Um, if you hadn't had an opportunity to check, take a look. Um, that uh, there, we've also got some new product offerings that we talked about at the last meeting, uh, some low use regions and a no the notion of an intro region um, that might be attractive. So take a look at uh, the pricing sheet. And if you have any questions on those kinds of things, we'd be happy to address them. Um, but it, for many of you, you're, you're going to be in a position where you're just going to, it's, you're going to pay what you've been paying all along because you're still, in the beta program with regard to the pricing. So, and that's largely because we want to say thank you for being with us up till now and we appreciate your support. Um, so yeah, so related to that, I did a new uh, experiment this month. Uh, I'm trying to move to a single system for keeping track of payments and invoices and things like that. And uh, we sent out invoices uh, as of the first the way the invoicing system goes out, they it goes out on a fixed date. Um, I set it up for the first, which means some of you would actually sometimes pay slightly in advance. Um, you can you you can do that, and what I'll have to do, and what I will do for those of you that have before the invoice came out, is I will apply the payment that you make to that invoice when it's issued. Or you can wait until the first and pay it. Um, they're, they're set up to be um, payment due on delivery. Um, so, and you have the, the the grace period available that we were, we talk about in our toss. Although I absolutely appreciate prompt payments. That's not. I'm never gonna uh, not appreciate that. So, uh, but it's basically a mechanism for us to allow. For, first of all, for you to get an invoice so you know what you're paying against and check to see that we're in agreement with that. And also, it gives me a vehicle to track payments and understand where um, every, everything is at. So um, I have, I, as many of you probably know, I, I have a full-time job in addition to doing this. And so sometimes it's it can be a lot to keep track of. Uh, and this is just one more tool to help with that. But there are a few cases where the invoices didn't get delivered correctly or they got del delivered to an email account that people might not be aware of. Emelina, I think you asked about that and uh, might be a good time to address it. So let me go back and find it. Um, if you didn't get an invoice, could you please just send me a private message and I will check. If you do send me a private message because you haven't received one, um, put in the email address that you would like to get the invoices at, because in most cases, what happened was I used an email address that was on file on your account and it's not the correct one or not what you're intending. 
and so you haven't seen the invoice or it got lost. Um, once we get all the, the email aspects of it taken care of, this should go a lot smoother going forward. And, uh, but, and then you can basically click through and pay off that invoice directly and I, it will get tracked in the back end. Uh, so I have some record of the payment. Um, if you didn't get one, like I said, let me know and we'll work it out. Uh, as Lola is saying in chat, it can take a little while for them to get issued uh, to go out. A little while isn't a day. If, um, if uh, anyway, I'll work those out. In a couple of cases, a number of you paid me in advance of the invoices going out. I'll apply the payments that you made and you should get an update showing the invoice paid. Uh, there's also a few cases where people have paid me for months in advance, like uh, six months or a year in some cases. Um, and I will, I'm going to apply those payments to the invoices going forward and keep track of it that way. So I, I'm aware of those cases and I'll get those updated. I tried to mark the invoices where I knew there were points pay, uh, money paid in advance. So people were aware that I, I don't expect them to pay this. This is for tracking purposes and I'll update the invoices to reflect the payments you've already made. So Ted, you, you mentioned yours. Yes, you have, I've got your payment. I'm just going to, I'm going to go through and update the invoice and apply the payment you already made. Um, invoicing. I can't think if there's anything else related to that. Is there any, so let me stop for a second and ask, is there any questions about the two topics I've talked about so far, the beta program or the the invoicing itself, the beta program ending and the invoices itself. I'll wait just a second for people to type. Logan, unless it's you think it's timely to this part of the discussion, I'd ask you to hold just general comments to the end. And I do want to open up the floor to anybody for comments. Okay, old, if you can send me an, an email, a message with your with your preferred um the, your preferred uh, email address, I'll check that on the invoice and make sure that one gets sent. Same thing with you. Yeah, so that the message that you get in World are basically uh, offline IM. So if, you, if you're not online, the system will send offlines out as for group notices and on direct IMs, um, which means that email is working, but it may not be the correct one for... Um, for the uh, invoices itself. And in other words, I may have used the incorrect email, any correct email address. I used what was on the account in most cases. So if you didn't get one, um, just drop me a note with the email that you'd like me to use. Um, and that's what, and I'll reissue the invoice with that email in mind. Uh, the it will come from uh, Mike Dixon actually. Uh, the, although the the account is associated with Utopias Utopia Sky. and I'm in the process of converting that uh, PayPal box to the business. So in the future it will be Utopia Sky, but right now it will probably come from Mike Dixon. But the email will be mike.dixon at utopiasky.com. So it should be recognizable. Yes, correct. And there is a, the logo is on the invoice and, um, yep. Uh, 
All right. So I will, I don't want to spend too much more time on that now. If you do have problems, just please just let me know and I'll work with you to get them resolved. Um, my hope is once all the email issues are taken care of, this is super easy going forward to, like Bensky said, you get, you'll get an invoice every month that you just have to pay off of. And um, if you do want to, to pay for longer durations as per the, uh, the uh, price sheet, we can give you a discount for paying six months or a year at a time. So, uh, so anyway, that's um, either way is uh, just let me know if you need, if any of this needs to get resolved and I'll definitely work with you on it. All right. Um, I'd like to, uh, I mentioned uh, the overall uh, performance of OpenSIM and like I said, my commitment to, to fixing things as best as I possibly can. Um, like I said, my goal is a quality service. Uh, I just want to reiterate one of the thing related to that. Um, if you have problems, um, I would rather you enter a ticket than not. Um, because, and I know some, I've been in this place myself, of course, I've used the system and had trouble and thought, well, I, I don't want to be a pain or I don't want, you know, it, you're, if you enter a ticket, you're not being a pain. It's actually very helpful because especially if it's timely, I can often go back and look in logs and track down problems and, and see, and there may be something I can do in the immediate that can address the issue that you're having. In some cases, the problems are going to be software related and bugs, and those things will go on our my backlog to get addressed as I do code development. And But it's still very helpful to know. So I, if you're inclined to put in a bug report, you're not being a pain. And I really appreciate the fact that you do. Um, it's, I can tell you though, it sometimes can get frustrating um, dealing with the software because you, you feel helpless uh, to fix things. And I really want you to all have a quality experience um, more than anything. I want that. Uh, so I, again, I can't, I won't ask for your trust uh, I, w I would, but, and I, I'd love to have it, but mostly I'm going to ask for your patience as I try and do my best to try and address these issues and get us to a place where things really are as stable and as high quality as I want them to be. And I know you do too. So I'll, that's the main thing I wanted to talk about with regard to beta and coming out of beta. Uh, we talked about invoicing the pricing sheets up on the webs on the, uh, uh, Discord site now, it'll be, if it isn't already, it will be up on the website in the near future. Um, the, uh, we keep an eye out for other information. We're going to be doing more things. Uh, uh, and I'm going to give Cal a chance in just a sec to talk about some of the events because we got quite a few events coming up that I also want to call attention to in the next month. Um, but that's the main thing I wanted to talk about with regard to development activities and the business side. Uh, so let, let me switch gears. I'm going to give uh, the channel over to Cal to talk uh, and she can address some of the events and the other kind of support issues that are on her mind. Thanks. Um, okay. So first things first, let's talk about discord. I know that, since the recent influx of Discord servers for everybody, um, it gets real easy to ignore an entire server because it's just so easy to right click that server icon and do server mute. The problem that poses for us is because in most cases, that is our only way of getting in touch with you. Um, we have offlines, of course, you know, we can send you an offline IM. And they'll go to your email, they may wind up in spam, or they may be completely discarded from you when you get like 17 group notices talking about our town hall or something like that. But again, the point that we're trying to make is that we're trying to get in touch with you. One of the things that Utopia Sky has prided itself on since 2002, because that's how long we've been around, is the sense of community and the grid is no different in fact it should be a shining example of that and we have tools that are available to us now 
within Discord to, you know, uh, collaborate together, share images and text and all sorts of things. And we really need to kind of utilize them to their fullest bandwidth. And in some cases, we're not doing that. So we, even as admins here, have started um, really kind of, um, you know, dropping the hammer on people like, hey, post in this channel, post in this one. I know it seems like we have a ton of channels, um, but you only see the channels that you're either a part of, you know, or ha are grouped with. Um, so if you have questions about where to post, I'm never going to have an issue answering that. If you don't know where to post something, I would rather you ask than just post it because we will always happily link you to the right place because it just helps us be organized. Think of these as kind of a, a, a much better than Skype, but almost like forums kind of utility, really, you know. I know there are some channels. The, the streaming lounge is notoriously busy. So, you know, I totally get it if you want to mute that channel. I, I think you miss out on a lot of fun things if you do, but to each their own. I would much rather you mute that channel than mute the whole server. Because if you mute the whole server, it's on you to come and take a look at whether or not we've posted anything. And by then you may have missed something or um, you don't see the new stuff like our news channels and our ads channels and all that. Um, we're adding more and more things to kind of help provide a sense of continuity across um, multiple really grids and even Discord servers. And now with the advent of server folders, you can kind of you know group your Discord servers together and you'll still get the notifications, but you don't have to you know scroll through like 30 servers or however many people may have. So it's very important. I really want to drive this point home, please. If you have muted this server, please unmute it and pick and choose channels that you mute. If you use the server and are confused about where to post or what the rules are for a particular posting, ask. Always ask. I will happily tell you. Eagle can help you too. She is literally as knowledgeable on Discord as I am and even then some because I routinely boot her out of the server to, to test permissions and stuff. So, you know, I mean, really, there is no better <laughs> Discord uh, maven than, than Eagle. Um, <clears throat> But it's super important, you guys, really, because we're never going to have that sense of community if we can't reach out and talk to each other, you know? The other thing that um, Mike had asked me to talk about is events. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. I hope everybody's sitting. I don't know if you know that there's going to be a wedding here soon. Just not sure if everybody got, you know, told that. Don't know. You know. Anyway, all kidding aside. So we start the one year anniversary celebration of the grid. Can you believe it's been a year? Seriously, I, I literally, when this happened, was like, are you serious? I didn't even know that. Um, but it time does fly, it really does. And so we're celebrating our anniversary on the grid and we're kicking it off with uh, Mike and my virtual wedding, which is actually one week after our real life wedding. So we're also using this opportunity to formally have our grand opening of our official USG formal ballroom on our botanical gardens region. And we've opened up our music in the parks section. So uh, for those who don't particularly like an adult venue in Fetish Fire, um, you can go to the music in the parks venue. They've got events every Tuesday, starting at two o'clock with uh, Edison Rex and then Phoenix. And then once a month, Lex Tech and Edison Rex are gonna uh, partner up for a Lex Tech particle show with uh, live composition stuff. Really cool stuff. Um, so there's those things going on. And then we've got some stuff during the week for that, I think. And then we've got a GT mini show uh, on the 21st. And then we've got Pyro VR fireworks show right after that. So that's at 11 on the 21st. And it's going to be interactive. So you guys are actually going to do a GT number with us. So we hope you can make it and stick around for the dancing and the fireworks after that. And then on the 22nd, we're actually going to attempt to do something that we've never done before. And that is for GT, we're going to do a meditative visual, um, you know, um, segment. I don't know, a meditative show. Uh, it's very short, but this one is pretty early. It's 8 a.m. grid time. So you might find if you're on the East, uh, or I mean, uh, Pacific 
uh, time zone that might be a little too unpalatable of a time zone. Um, but you might find if you're Eastern that that works out just fine. So hopefully people can come and, and uh, have fun with that one. We also have some upcoming events that we're trying to plan for in October and November, and that's a Meet the Creators segment, um, kind of like where we get to talk to the creators on the grid and you know, get their store and what they're into and all the kinds of things like how they started and all that cool stuff. The events team is working on that. And then we have a full-blown GT show in Thanksgiving Christmas time. It's going to be seven numbers, six or seven numbers, you guys. It's really big. And we're actually going to be doing some things that really are going to push the limits of open sin. So if nothing else, come to see if we'll succeed or fail. But hopefully, knock on wood, we'll succeed. So lots of cool stuff coming up. Um, I'm going to give it back to Mike. If there's any questions, though, about the pricing, I just want to head back to that. If there's any questions on it, you know, what does this plan mean? What does this discount mean? How do I get this? We're happy to answer them. Mike and I can always help answer those. Just send us a DM. Um, you could also send us a ticket if you want to, a support ticket. Um, but either way, we can we can answer those questions, too. So, Mike, back to you. All right. That's pretty much mostly what we wanted to cover today. Um, Callie will probably thump my leg if I forgot something. Um, we're not actually that close. We're across the hall. She'll probably throw something. But uh, hopefully she I didn't and we're in good shape. <laughs> uh, so what I want to do now is actually just open it up for, to Q&A. If, if there's anything, if you have comments, questions, anything like that, feel free. Um, use the, you can use the voice channel if you'd like to speak or type in the town hall if you haven't opted in. Um, so, uh, but yes, like I said, that's the formal part of the discussion. Uh, so let's open it up to just Q&A and comments. I guess I'll toss my two cents in here. Go for it. Um, uh, Logan's right, or Logan for sure, whatever is easiest. Um, I've been on OpenSIM a while, and it's great what Utopia Sky is trying to do with OpenSIM development. However, Price will always be the key. Yeah, Utopia Sky has members that are willing to pay whatever is listed, but there are many uh, who will not, which those like myself uh, who pay for a server that is better quality and cheaper than anything in this half of the hemisphere. And because of that, folks like myself stay in places like Oscrid. Yeah, I totally understand. Um, and there are some, uh, well, OS Grid is a good example of a, a grid that where their business model, such as it is, is to essentially allow 
somebody in a case like that where they want to create regions on a server they control to connect to the set of grid services. I'm not ruling out ever offering that kind of model, but but honestly, if I did, I would want to do it more securely. Um, I'm I'm a I'm a big proponent of the hypergrid, but I'd like to see it evolve a little bit and make it more secure. Uh, so the transactions that are happening over it aren't uh, played out in the open and the, just the, it reflects current practice. So there, I think you're right. And there will always be cases and there are companies, not just OS Grid, Zeta World, there's a number of others that offer uh, the ability to connect a set of regions um, to their grid services. Those are, that's a very valid business model as well. It's not one that I wanna pursue now because I really wanna get the the grid software that we're running kind of nailed down and really stable. Uh, and that's just my focus. I'm, I'm just being, just speaking plainly. I'm a single person doing this. I would love to get some help. Uh, but right now it's mostly me doing development. And so I'm going to focus on the things that, uh, that I think add the most value for our residents. But, and you're right, there will be some people that where that won't be a right fit. And the good news is because of the open SIM community is what it is. It, there is op opportunities for people to uh, roll their own and do it that way as well. So, yeah, because I mean, I mean, at one time, i i had a I had a conversation with the the owner of of um, the Great Canadian Grid because I was going to move my entire estate off um, off my servers and over there, and. Just with talking with him, we both we both we both agreed that either that even if he reduced his prices to the cheap the cheapest amount, I was still getting a better deal, just because of where I get my servers from. Right, and I and I, like I said, it sounds like in your case that's the best option for you um, going forward, and the. Uh... I just want to make sure that the people that choose to to live here to make to to buy regions here also understand that my goal is not the lowest price. There are other people that will serve that need, and that's okay. Um, it's ultimately about what my goal, uh, what our goal as a grid is, and and really it's about uh, features and quality. And and really, to me, at being at pair, I want to make an environment. That is comp where a content creator coming from SL is going to be comfortable because they're going to see similar sets of features and a similar similar level of quality, and that they can trust that they can they can do their creative pursuits here, whether that's money earning or not, that's their choice, and that it will work out well. The same thing would be true for people that want to sell, sell rental space or. Uh, develop property or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I just like the same kind of pursuits to be possible. And, and that includes, um, you know, people that just want to come and create or cl go clubbing or things like that. So, but there will, the open some community as a whole is certainly able to address a uh, lowest price as a concern. And there are options for that. And, and I, some of what I do, I'll give back. That's, so that's the other thing too, that, that hopefully, some of the benefits, uh, some of the issues that get addressed and the code that's been fixed will make its way back into OpenSIM. I've done that already with a couple of issues that I reported and, and provided fixes for. So um, I wanna be a good part of the OpenSIM community too going forward, but I also wanna develop USG to be the commercial grid that I think it, th we need in the OpenSIM space. So of any other... Any other questions or comments? I'm gonna read back a second, just make sure I didn't miss anything.
Okay, so I don't see any other uh, major questions. And I appreciate the, the folks that have messaged me already about uh, some of the invoicing issues. I hopefully I've got some of the, I think we've got some of those addressed already. So, and a couple of others I'll get taken care of today and tomorrow. All right. I'm happy to stay and answer questions or, or just chat and visit. Uh, but the formal meetings actually, I talked to, we talked about the stuff, the main stuff that I wanted to. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah, go for it. To kind of offset what was just said about quote unquote, better, more stable, cheaper grids. Can you um, kind of outline what happened to GCG recently, just to give folks an idea of what, can happen if you go too cheap. Yeah, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, so I I don't know all of the details around uh, the way GCG is architected. So I'm going to speak to um, the concept in general because I, I, I don't want to address specifics where I don't really know the answers. Um, but there's a lot of ways to build a grid. You can build them, you can set things up so that uh, everything runs in a single server, you can run lots of regions in a single process, you can put them in separate processes, you can spread the workload across multiple servers. Um, and obviously, some of those choices add cost to the overall picture. Um, I, I can't comment on his architecture, but I do know that he re there was recently some comments made by Roddy where he's mentioned that they don't have some of the redundancy in the backend services that would allow them to be able to take one down and do maintenance while the other continues to run. Uh, that's called high availability in terms of architecture. And, it's a, and it does cost extra money to design for that and to build it that way. And uh, I... I just want to make it clear right now, my goal with the service with USG as a service is high availability that my intention is to get uh, things to a point where um, there really is no downtime. We're sort of there now. Um, there's some things in OpenSIM that don't really lend themselves to, to real complete high availability. I'd like to be able to get to a point where I can literally, uh, because I have to do maintenance on a server, I can migrate somebody's region live while it's still running across to a new server and then do the maintenance I need to do and then migrate it back. Um, we're not there yet, but, but that uh, level of reliability is, is possible. And it's, and I think in a lot of cases in a commercial service, it's desirable, but it does cost more money to do that. And, uh, and I think that's the largely what, uh, Roddy was addressing was, um, in fact, I think he did an open letter to his members asking if they were willing to pay a little bit more money to get that kind of reliability because the current system's not architected that way. So, um, yeah, that, Alexi, I hope that answered your question. Well, I heard they were down for like two weeks or something. Maybe that was an exaggeration. I believe they so. They were down for an extended period. Um, not really sure what the reasons were, but yeah, they were down for, I do think it was two weeks. I think it hurt. So they may be cheaper, but a lot of times you pay for that in other ways. That's, I guess that's my point. The, yes. The issue that uh, Mike just uh, brought up there, in fact, is what happened to Roddy is that he doesn't have the redundancy in place. So when a hard mm, drive yeah. went uh, south on him, there was nothing he could do except uh, uh, ask his uh, service provider his hosting company to replace the uh, server. And then after it was replaced, he then had to rebuild the grid again. So uh, now, that's Harry speaking. Thank you, Harry. And Harry lives on or at least one of your tunes is there, right? Or uh, used to be. Yes, yes. I, I, uh, I hooked up with uh, Roddy back in the days when he first started, first opened the doors. And, uh, and it's only just recently that uh, I have uh, started uh, doing some venturing out on my own in different areas, but uh, yes, I've been with G GCG since the first week they opened the doors. Yeah, the truth of the matter is what we're charging for our services is significantly less than what people will pay in SL and is only 
um, slightly higher than some of the, the cheapest costs and is still less than some of our other competitors by a little bit. We are competitively priced. So I don't think there's an issue there. And if somebody does want, you know, again, that's the, to Mike's point. If somebody wants to go and do that, we've actually uh, known of a few people that wanted to kind of host their own. You know, that's an option. Everybody can do what they want to do. That's the beauty of it all. But this is what we're doing. And we're in Utopia Sky right now, so. Well, and I, um, I the kind of, with regard to going the way of Inwards or Islands, um, I, uh, th there's enough history there that I don't know that I want to directly comment on that, but I would, I will say that, um, I really, if there's ever a risk of, of us not continuing to do this and you, the message that you should get from this meeting is exactly the opposite. This is a big, uh, confirmation that we're here to stay. That's what the intention of the meeting is. Um, but if ever a time came when, you know, stuff happens, I might, someone might get sick, uh, heaven forbid, you know, if for any reason something happened that uh, we weren't able to continue, I will do my best and I'll promise this. And I, again, I don't, I understand that asking for trust is difficult given all the things that have happened, but I, my intention would be to do right by my residents and make sure there's an opportunity to shut things down cleanly and get content out. Um, I can tell you from my experience within worlds, that was never the, the or mechanism that was in place was never meant to do backups externally to the, the service. And so for that reason, it's been problematic for people to get their data out and the, uh, the fact that we're hypergrid is another reason why that's another reason why because you can take content now so long as the the permissions are respected and the copyrights of the creators are respected you can take that content to another grid and there's no problem with that and i i wanted to make that choice as well as the choice to not have a currency of our own so that i can let somebody else run the currency because that they know what they're doing and are willing to take the liability for that. Um, all those choices were made because we're trying to offer stability. So that's, um, nobody can see the future. Uh, I can't tell you what's gonna happen, but I can tell you that this meeting today is in a big way meant to say we're here to stay. Uh, and I'm gonna do my best to make sure that we do. Thank you, Mike. This is uh, this is Neitiri Tuskaha Moaite, or just Ne for short. <laughs> um, to expand on my comment earlier, of um, you know, people go wherever home is for them is where they should be. Uh, to expand on that, um, I know that we all have our own personal thoughts on other grids, and you know, well, we like this grid, we don't like that grid. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. My fireworks won't work on any point oh eight grid at all. However, if that's a grid for you, then that is where you should be. And I think it's counterproductive, and especially for business owners, that's a very quick way to kill clients and get rid of clients by bashing other grids. So, uh, you know, whether you like a grid or not, yeah, that's that's fine. That's your choice. But bashing them, especially publicly is very counterproductive and uh, it just harbors bad feelings and like i said for business owners it's a good way to get rid of clients so that's just my thoughts i can actually answer emelina's thank you me um no our servers are not in florida yeah i think uh digi world sent out a notice that theirs are directly in the path of door yeah. I am hopeful that that things will be okay there. It looks like not to divert, but it looks like um, you know that it is kind of changing a little bit of direction. I know it's a category five, so even the outer bands can still be Oy, catastrophic. Five still, now, huh? Yeah. 
But that yep. that is a good point. It's a it's a factor, at least for the choice that I the reason I picked the data center I picked was because it's in a boring place that, where nothing ever happens. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's in a strictly flyover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're we are not affected by that storm. Lola, take care. Thanks for coming. See you, Lola. Have a good one. See you next Saturday. <laughs> it's, so one final comment from me, and then, and then I think we're going to wrap up because I'm not seeing a lot of other comments come up. Um, the uh, uh, Nate just mentioned 08 as an example of uh, some grids making that choice and that it restricts what's possible and what's not. Um, I, I'm also aware of the fact that by choosing 09 and staying a bit more bleeding edge, there's there's a little bit of instability that comes with that. And like I said, I've tried to manage against that a little bit by being selective about what changes I take. Um, I'm aware right now that people are having teleport issues. Um, there was some problems with Prim's not resing fully. Um, and I've t I touched on that earlier that I'm, I'm going to put fixes in to address those myself. Um, but it's still open sim, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, and there will be some instability that comes from the, the platform and the version that we pick. That, that I can't control all of that software because it's not mine. I didn't make it in the first place. Um, I can tell you that I'm going to do my best to try and correct some of those issues using code from Halcyon or new code that I write. And uh, we'll get to a point where we have the stability that I think we all want. Um, but there will always be trade-offs. Um, part of the reason I want to be on 09 is so that I can offer uh, f uh, features that are in SL. I've had a conversation with Beck. She's going to put uh, Bake on Mesh, for instance, into the OpenSim viewer for grids that can support it. And I want to be in a position to do that and turn it on when it's available. Um, uh, so, you know, yeah, those kind of features are important to me uh, and I want to be able to support them. Logan, if that's a good ex example of a good question. Yes, Animesh is in 09 and it is on the grid. You can do Animesh now on U Utopia Sky, partly because I used 09 as the base for the, the grid we built. So, um, and the, uh, I guess similarly, Bake on Mesh, when the Firestorm viewer releases and Beck gets uh, that version into that code into OpenSim, my hope uh, working with uh, other people in core is to be able to have uh, Bake on Mesh available on USG so you can wear a mesh avatar and apply system clothing layers and things like that to it. So, again, I want to have an experience that's equivalent to. Um, equivalent to what someone would find on SL because I really would like to be able to get some of the content creators over here. As we already have, in fact. All right. Um, I think unless anybody has any other final comments, I'm done. And I really thank you for being here. Um, Speak for your up, attention never hold your peace because the bottle will be shut yes. down in a minute yep it's it's very Thank much appreciated you, that you give up your time you're very welcome <laughs>